just forget all those things around you and sing sweet praises to him you will usher in the presence of god and he will meet all of your needs just forget all those things around you and sing sweet praises to him you will usher in Get all those things around you and sing sweet praises to Him. You will usher in the presence of God and He will meet all of your needs. Sing sweet praises to Him. You will usher in the presence of God, and He will meet all of your needs. I will praise You, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will sing. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name. I will sing praise to your name, O oh Lord, most high. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Sing sweet praises to Him. You will usher in the presence of God, and He will meet all of your needs. That's right. God is here to meet every one of your needs. Yeah. Believe that today that God is answering your prayers and He's giving you the victory. Mm. Welcome to another program of Just Like Him. Yeah. We believe that this word is going to encourage you and build you up and strengthen you and you know enable you to walk victorious in Amen. this life. Yeah. And we've been talking about joy and how joy is a fruit of the Spirit. And also singing about this song, the first part of it, it says just to forget all the things that are around you and to sing sweet praises to the Lord. And by doing that, you usher in the presence of the Lord. And you know, you create this atmosphere around you full of joy when you sing and worship and praise the Lord for who He is. You know, joy, you know, you can just experience joy wherever you are just by singing and worshiping God. And there are a lot of good Psalms that you can take from the scriptures and worship God yeah. with. And there are a lot of other good promises that you can sing and say, Lord, I thank you that you are my helper. You are with me. You never leave me. Sing songs like that and you will get so much of joy mm -hmm. in you. Yeah, the song was really, it has an amazing line where it says, like you were saying, just forget all those things around you and sing sweet praises to Him. Yeah. And that's what you got to do with times. You have to just forget 
um, you know, things that have been trying to come by your way and, and put your mm. attention on the Lord. Yeah. Many fix times, your yeah, fix God. your mind on the Lord. Because, see, our minds, we have the ability to, to fix our minds on the Lord or fix it on the things that are going on around us. And the Bible says here that when you, when you fix your mind on the Lord, you set your attention on Him, that He's going to keep you in perfect peace. Mm. And maybe today you're not in peace. You're, everything around you is disturbed. And in your mind, you're very disturbed. But Jesus is assuring you that when you keep your mind fixed on Him and on His words, that you can restore that peace back into your life. And He's yeah. going to restore that peace into your life. And um, you know, the other line in this song that is amazing, it says that you will usher in the presence of God when you fix your mind on Him. When you start to praise Him and you start to say, Father, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put all these cares and worries, I'm going to put it onto you mm. and fix my attention on you. Yeah. And as you do that, you'll start to sense the presence of God just, you know, just overshadowing every part of mm. you. Because that's what God's Word does. It sets you free from every discouragement and every bondage. Yeah. And, and maybe, you know, maybe there's strife and confusion going on around you wherever you are. You can say, in Jesus' name, I bind those spirits of strife and confusion and division that is happening all around me. Mm. And Father, I'm just going to praise you and worship you. And I thank you for your peace that enters into this situation and completely changes it. Mm. Because, you know, Satan, even he tries to confuse us and tries to come and attack us with all these, you know, wrong words and wrong thoughts. But, you know, we have more power over the enemy. We do. Jesus has given us power and authority over all the power of the enemy. Mm. And by you using your words, by speaking the promises of God, you can change those um, atmospheres. Maybe it's filled with strife and confusion or maybe um, sickness and disease around you, you can change those yeah. just by speaking the Word of God. That's right. The Word of God is a weapon yeah. that and can destroy. Exactly, it yeah. can destroy. And do you know that even in a time of distress, you can rejoice in the Lord? Yeah. You might say, how in the world can that be? How can I rejoice when I'm facing distress? Well, I'm going to take you to a story in the Bible about um, David and how he was facing a time of distress in his life and how he started to encourage himself in the Lord and the situation completely turned around. Mm. Now the story comes from the book of First Samuel 30 and um, I'll just give the story in a nutshell. Uh, David and his men, they had come to this particular city and um, when, they, when they came, they came with their families and all that and apparently the city, or it had just you know, completely been burnt up and destroyed and the worst part about it was that David's family and his men's families they all had been taken captives now this is a very distressful situation mm. and um, you know David at this point he's wondering what to do because if you read I'll just read first Samuel 30 verse 6 now this is a very very distressful situation David's his family has been taken captive and so has all the men around him their families are taken captive all their things are gone and this is what happened in verse 6 first Samuel 30 verse 6 it says that David was greatly distressed he was so much facing so much of stress in his life he didn't know what to do and you know what the worst part of it was that the people they wanted to stone him mm. all his men because they were also grieved because their families had been taken yeah. captive. And because he was the leader. He was the leader, captain. yeah. And this was such a, such a distressful situation. Mm. But you know, in the same verse it says, in verse 6, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Yeah. He encouraged himself. See, the first part says he was greatly distressed. But the last part says David encouraged himself. You know, nobody was here around David to encourage him. Everybody wanted to stone him. What a situation, right? Just imagine if you put yourself in, these sh in David's shoes and if you found yourself there, man, people want to stone me and this is such a distressful situation. Mm. What am I going to do? Yeah, not only have I lost everything, you know, all the people are against me as well. Yeah. All that my is, men yeah. are against me. Yeah, my men, yeah. Mm. And it says David encouraged himself. What do you think he must have done? How do you think he would have encouraged himself? Well, if you read the Psalms, you can see many places how he encouraged himself. I'm just assuming, you know, probably he would have said, you know, God, you are my helper. God, my heart is fixed on you. I know mm. that you are my confidence yeah. and I know that you are my helper. I'm not going to be afraid what man can do unto me. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he must have taken, you know, a scripture from um, like Psalm 27 
and he must have said lord you are the strength of my life mm. i'm not going to fear what man can do unto me yeah in the midst of the situation that he was facing he encouraged himself so nobody was there even to encourage himself and yeah you know sometimes in your life you know you might not have people around you to encourage you yeah maybe they are against you or maybe they just they just not there to encourage you Yeah. But you know what God has given you a promise in his word that you can encourage your own self in the Lord. Yeah. When you when you don't feel at all being joyful, you can take his word and encourage yourself. Mm. And that is actually going to lift you up. Yeah. So it goes so, in, yeah. in Ephesians 5:19 it says you can encourage yourself by speaking to yourself in psalms mm. and hymns and spiritual songs by praising and worshiping God. You can encourage yourself. You can magnify God and make him big in your yeah. life and praise him and worship him. That's encouraging yourself. Mm. Cuz sometimes you yourself need to hear those words before anybody yeah. else right. can hear it and you can hear it from the word of God. Thank God we have this word that is so filled with the promises of God that we can encourage ourselves with. Mm. Yeah. And going on, let's see the result of what happened to David when he started encouraging himself in the Lord. Verse 19, this is what it says. Now okay before verse 19 um I'm going to just go on before on to verse 8 it, it says you know when David started encouraging himself all of a sudden what you would notice is that you know he he just immediately started to hear the voice of God he went before God and he started telling God okay God I've encouraged myself here and I've I've just spoken life into myself but now what should I do you know there are enemy armies out against me and they've taken captive um you know my family and my men's family what do i do now mm. and after encouraging himself in the lord god gives him the answer god gives him guidance to know exactly what he should do yeah in fact if you read verse 8 god tells him you know go against those armies and pursue them for you yeah. are going to recover everything that you have lost so um verse 19 it says now you david sure? before yeah. that he had gone and he had um gone out to battle and we see that God actually gave David the victory. I mean that's amazing. It God is. gave him the victory. And mm. verse 19 says and there was nothing lacking to them. Neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Amen. Wow, just just read those lines again. If you it remind yourself David recovered all. Mm. Everything that he had lost, he recovered it all. Mm. There was nothing that it says here very clearly that they didn't lack anything. Mm. What is the key in this story? You can see that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Yeah. See, you might think that's a small thing, encouraging myself. What is that going to do? Well, that's going to do big things in your life. Mm. You know, by encouraging yourself in the Lord, you might be recovering things that you've lost. Yeah. Maybe you you're going to recover the years that you have lost, years that you wasted and you wish that you could get back by encouraging yourself in the Lord. You can you know God's going to restore those years back to you. Mm-hmm. And what an amazing thing we have. Yeah. It's a promise. And in the midst of all that, he inquired of the Lord, mm. "What shall I do?" And that's a good, you know, thing to do when you're in time of trouble, not to run away from God, but to run to him. and get help from him get strength from him you know that's even like um another king in the bible named jehoshaphat that's he also did a similar thing he when enemy armies were surrounding him and coming up against him you know he asked the lord what shall i do mm. and the lord said you send the praisers and the worshipers in front of the army and by singing and praising god what you're doing is you're creating this atmosphere of praise and worship to the, to the lord you know that that satan hates mm. the devil hates and in that he gets confused yeah and you've seen that story how all the enemy armies were slain yeah and they were they started killing each other just because these people decided we are going to magnify our god he's the one who brought us out he's the one who has saved us mm. and god is able to deliver us When you magnify the Lord and praise him, he begins to work yeah. in your life. And you know, it's not weird to encourage yourself. Yeah, it's not. It's not weird at all. You know, the Bible does tell us the scripture that we went earlier just to repeat one more time. Ephesians 5:19 and 20 tells you to speak to yourselves in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the yeah. Lord. And it also says to give thanks to the Lord. So, see the scripture it mentions many places where you can lift yourself up by just encouraging yourself yeah
Yeah, this is one verse that we're reading, um, the story of David and how he encouraged himself and this other place in Ephesians. But many, mm. many other places, if you start reading, many of the uh, kings that God appointed, they had to set themselves to seek the Lord, to encourage themselves. That's mm. going to do so much of good to you. Yeah. you know, like I said earlier, you can be recovering things in your life just by encouraging yourself. Yeah. Even when the situation is, you know, distress yeah. or something like that. You, you can, can lift your hands mm. and, you know, sing praises to the Lord and it will change. Yeah. It will change things. And another way, you know, that you can encourage yourself is by praying in the Spirit, praying yes. in tongues. The Bible tells us that when you receive the Holy Spirit into your life, He actually fills you with a new language. And that is the language of praying in the Holy Ghost. The more you start praying in tongues, you are actually going to start seeing yourself being encouraged. You know, so there are so many ways that you can encourage yourself. If you have nobody else to encourage you, one of the ways you can start is by you know, singing songs of praise that will encourage you. Go into the Psalms and find the Psalms where David starts singing places where um, he says, you know, the Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is mm. my helper. I will not be afraid. He's my refuge He's and my, my refuge. fortress. My yeah. God in Him I trust. Yeah. And like the song we were singing, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. It's in Psalm 9. I will show forth your marvelous works constantly being in remembrance of God's faithfulness mm. that he has done before, the victories that He, uh, that you have won through his hand. I will be glad and rejoice in you, Lord. I will sing praises to your name. Mm. That's magnifying the Lord, making him big in your life. Yeah, and you know, repeat again, singing praises. And the other one, the other way that you can encourage yourself is by reading the word of God. Mm. That word will really encourage you and build you up. You, you you might take one verse, maybe like, you know, a very simple verse like Philippians 4.13, where it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. You know, that might sound very simple, but if you just start saying that I can do all things, then what you can do is, you can take that thing that you're facing that seems impossible and say, Lord, I can do this thing through you, Christ, who strengthens me. Yeah. And that's, that's gonna encourage you, really. It's, and even yeah. rejoicing in the Lord is, Sometimes you have to do it by faith. Mm. You know, even when you don't feel like it, you do it because uh, because you like to see the end result mm. of victory in your life. And God promises mm. victory. I'm reminded of um, this man named Habakkuk in, in the book of Habakkuk. He's, in fact, he says, and you can read this in chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. He was going through a really troubled time, just something similar to David. All his flocks were not um, producing and everything, the wine, there was no, nothing was producing in his life. His and fields were dead. His fields were dead and all that, but it just says later on, he starts to praise the Lord. Mm. He just starts praising. And um, maybe we can just quickly read that. It's a short uh, part in the book of, uh, let me see if I can find that. Habakkuk 3. Yeah, Habakkuk yeah. 3. 70, it says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall, the, uh, neither shall fruit be in the wines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. So this man was going through a troubled time, but he says in verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. Mm. He found victory in rejoicing in the Lord. Yeah, the joy of the Lord will just lift you up and set you free from any distress that you're facing. Amen. So make it a choice today to say, I will rejoice in the Lord. We encourage you to really take the word of God and, and lift yourself up. You know, when you're facing distress, that word is going to just lift you up out of all that bondage and it's going to set you free. So believe today that as you rejoice, you're going to recover it all.